on Keys to Kingdom Living. God is bringing things out to the surface, and when you start seeing the ugly, the underbelly of sin start coming out and manifesting as evil and corrupt behavior in the very highest office of America, then know that God is exposing with his light and with his truth the, the wickedness and the vile stuff that is trying to take this nation. Satan is trying to use it to take this nation down, and God says, no, I've got a right righteous seed. I've got a righteous church. I'm going to spare my, my people from destruction that is coming upon the earth, but I've got to send my prophets out to the nation and tell them, wake up church. Wake up church. Come out from among them and be ye separate. You're not children of darkness. You're not children of night. You're children of light and children of the day. Come out so you do not partake of the destruction that's going to come upon them and that without warning. Welcome to Keys to Kingdom Living. I'm your host, Pastor Asa Dockery, coming to you from the War Harvest North Sanctuary. We're located at 135 Bud Franklin Drive in Blairsville, Georgia. If you live anywhere in the vicinity, we'd love for you to come out and be a part of one of our services, either on Sunday morning at 10.30 a.m. or Wednesday evening at 7 p.m. All the information about our service times and location, you find that right there on our website, whcnorth.org. I am so excited to be able to announce today that we're bringing you a brand new word is entitled, Stand Strong for Jesus. As the body of Christ, this is the hour that the light of Christ has to come forth out of us, and we've got to be strong witnesses to the world of our Lord and Savior, who He lives in us, because greater is He that is in us than he that is in the world. Get out the Word of God. Go with me, and let's hear this first portion of Stand Strong for Jesus. As I was seeking the Lord and asking for His direction, His Word, His understanding for you, his children. This is what God laid on my heart. And as I'm ministering to this word, just pray over it and pray over me that God will give me the strength to say this the way it needs to be said because this word is from the heart of God and it's for you. And he's given me a tongue to learn that I may know how to speak a word in season to those who are weary. Are you weary today? Well, that weariness is about to come off of you because the anointing is on God's Word. Today, the message is entitled, Stand Strong for Jesus. Body of Christ, if there's anything that we need to do right now other than pray, is to stand strong for Jesus. Let's pick it up in verse 1, 1 Thessalonians 5. But concerning the times and the seasons, brethren, you have no need that I should write to you. For you yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so comes as a thief in the night. For when they say peace and safety, then sudden destruction comes upon them as labor pains upon a pregnant woman, and they shall not escape. Say that with me. And they shall not escape. You know, when we're reading Scripture we need to understand that when it says things like this, it's very important. It's very tragic that there are people that are literally in this world that Paul is talking about in our day and time. And when these things transpire, when the day of the Lord comes, there will be those that will not escape what is coming on the world. But then he goes on, Paul writes, But you, brethren, are not in darkness. I love that. So that this day should overtake you as a thief. You are all sons of light and sons of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as others do, but let us watch and be sober. That's where we're at right now. Let us watch and and be sober, for those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who get drunk are drunk at night. But let us, 
That's talking about us, the body of Christ, who are of the day, be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and as a helmet, the hope of salvation for, verse 9, look at it, for God did not appoint us to wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. When you were a child, did you ever try to convince your uh, mom or dad to let you do something that other children were doing because other parents were letting them do what they wanted to do? Or if you did, did you get this response? I suppose if they were setting themselves on fire, you'd want to too. How many just ignored the part of asking your parents and went ahead and did what others were doing. And you thought, well, it's easier to get forgiveness than it is permission, so I'll just go ahead and do what I want to do. You know, Paul is talking along these lines. He says, we're not children of the night or children of darkness. We're children of the light and of the day. And we don't do like those that are in the world, those who are still spiritually asleep, those who are still separated from God because of their sin. We're not of them. And just because the world is doing it does not mean that we need to be doing it. Can I get a witness out there? We're certainly living in dark days, and we know this because we can see that almost uh, anything goes now. One of the greatest deceptions, hear what the Spirit is saying this morning. One of the greatest deceptions of living in dark days or evil times is the spirit of disobedience that is associated with rebellion and sin. Have you seen a time when sin was not only tolerated in society, but actually now is ce celebrated by leaders? When the leaders of society turn a blind eye to sin and wickedness, then we know that corruption has infiltrated the land in the highest offices. What are we to do when the authority figures, such as parents, teachers, elected officials, and even some ministers begin to condone the deeds that Scripture plainly tells and warns us, do not do them? Paul tells us in this letter, when this occurs, it means that people have fallen spiritually asleep. When I wrote that down, Im immediately the Holy Spirit brought back to my remembrance the story of Samson and Delilah and how Samson's heart was for Delilah, but Delilah's heart was for money and the, for the Philistines. And Delilah, the Bible says there in, in uh, Judges 16, it says that Delilah lulled Samson to sleep on her knees before she called on the Lord of the Philistines to come and shave the locks of hair off his head so that he would be like any other ordinary man and lose his supernatural anointing on his life and his pr the presence of God would literally lift off of him. I want you to think what the Spirit is saying. Get some, get some understanding going on this morning. Let the Lord stir you up today. I know it may still feel like it's early and you're still in your pajamas, but hear what the Spirit is saying today. When, when Delilah let Samson lie his, lay his head on her knees and she lulled him to sleep. That is what the world they're, they're beating the mantra they're, they're hitting that drum and, and that rhythm and that it's like it's just trying to put people to sleep spiritually and say whatever feels good is right because we call it right now and anybody that calls what we call right wrong, they are wrong and you're not to listen to them and that is the mantra, the slogan that the world is, is uh, declaring over the nation's and people are listening to that, and they're falling to sleep spiritually, and they're losing sight of what God has been saying and what God is doing, and it's pulling them into that web of deceit, and they begin to live in a, 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 a reality that is not true. It's a, it's a reality that's been made up through the lies of Satan and of man because they want the pleasures of this world more than they want the righteousness and holiness of God in their lives, and we need to cry aloud this 
morning and declare that the Lord, we are to listen to him because the Lord, he is God. The Lord, he is God over America and what God has written and what God has spoken in his word through his holy apostles and prophets and through the Lord Jesus Christ. That word still stands. And if the word calls it sin, it's still sin today. If the word calls it righteousness, it's still righteous today. And we need to listen to what the Spirit is saying and tune out what Delilah and the world are saying because they're trying to lull you to sleep and let you know that sin is okay now. Why? Why are they doing this? Because the Bible says in Romans 1, although they know God and although they knew God, they chose not to glorify Him as God and rejected and suppressed the truth in unrighteousness so that they would give themselves over to the lust that was burning in the hearts, men with men, women with women. And because of evil lust burning in people's hearts, they're trying to rewrite not only history, they're trying to rewrite the truth. But the Lord has said, that word that has gone forth out of his mouth that shall not alter be careful who you're listening to right now. Be careful and line up everything, even what I'm saying. See if it, check it with this word and see if it lines up with this word. If it does not line up with this word, then get rid of it. Get it out of your memory. Get it out of your thought life. It is a live man and not of God if it does not line up with this word. But if it lines up with this word, then hear what the Spirit has given me to share with you today. Samson laid down on Delilah's lap and went to sleep. And Paul tells us those who sleep, sleep at night. Those who get drunk, they get drunk at night. But we are not of those who do such things because we are children of the light and children of the day. As we see the fulfillment of this letter that Paul wrote, to the church at Thessalonica, along with the signs of the times, this is certainly not the time to fall asleep at the wheel and begin to partake of the pleasures of this world just because others are doing it. Are you hearing what the Spirit is saying today? Just because others are participating in sin, others are condoning sin, others call sin good and good evil, and just because they're doing it does not mean that we become partakers of it. And there's a reason why, and I'll share it here in a little while, why the Lord is telling me to tell you, come out from among them and be ye separate, says the Lord. Touch not what is unclean, and I will receive you unto myself, this word says. It's true. Even Bible tells us that sin has pleasure for a season. But the end of sin is destruction and death. This is why the Lord is saying, do not partake of those who are calling good evil and evil good, because the end of that is destruction and death. And God does not want us to be a part of that because we're his children and he loves us. He loves the world. He loved the world so much that he gave his only begotten son. It's not that he loves us more. It's that we allow him to be our heavenly father. We hold ourselves accountable to him. And he can, through that accountability, keep us from going into sin, going into rebellion, going into perversion, going into bondages and addictions because we allow God to hold our feet to the fire and to hold that standard of righteousness up in our own hearts so that we don't not only partake of the things that the world is partaking, enough, but we don't partake of the destruction and the death that is coming up on the world that Paul talks about here in, in Thessalonians. The end of, of sin is death and destruction. Destruction, Bible says here, is coming up on the children of disobedience, and they're not aware of what's about to happen to them because they're asleep. And this is so sobering. This is so disturbing that there is a generation of people 
They're spiritually asleep. Things are going on around them like the Lord of the Philistines was, was moving about around uh, Samson, but he was not aware of it because he was so en engulfed in his sleep. He was feeling so comfortable there in Delilah's presence. Be careful that you do not get so comfortable in Delilah's presence that you forget that God's presence has lifted off of your life. The, Lord, the word of the Lord is coming forth today. Don't allow the presence of the Lord, to, uh, the presence of the world to seduce you and lull you into a spiritual sleep and stupor where you don't even realize what is going on around you and how the enemy is using that temptation and that trap to pull you into that place of destruction they brought Samson there for one reason to destroy him because he was the enemy of the Philistines he was a friend of Israel but what Bible says is, is about to happen to those who are asleep those who are not spiritually awake they will be overtaken Samson was overtaken, and they will be destroyed if God does not intervene. Turn with me to Ephesians chapter 5, please. Verse 6. Paul writes here to the church of Ephesus, hear what the Spirit is saying today. Let no one deceive you with empty or vain words. Where are we at right now in America especially? I can't speak for other nations of the world, but I can definitely speak for being a representative and a citizen of America. We're living in a day and a time where people are filled with vain words, and they're speaking those vain words, those words of deceit, empty words is what the New King James calls it. Let no one deceive you with empty or vain words. And there's a reason why. For because of those things, the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. People are getting on uh, social media. Uh, ministers are on the television, on satellite television, 24-7. The word of God is going out. The gospel is going out. Uh, Christians are proclaiming the Word of God on social media, and, 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 and then you have those that are the children of disobedience. They hear that, and it's like they, they don't want to hear what the Word of the Lord is, is being said to them. It is, it's torment to them, and they want to shut it down. And it says when, when they're filled with vain and empty words, it's going to cause the wrath of God to come up on them, the sons, the children of disobedience obedience and then he says almost like he did there in in first Thessalonians Paul tells the church of Ephesus therefore do not be partakers with them just because they seem like they're getting away with murder well Millions of babies have been murdered in the womb under the God of convenience, and it seems as though the world is promoting that. It has become their idol, their God, that, that this is what America is about, killing our babies in the womb. The most unsafe place on the earth should not be the womb. It should be the safest place, but it seems as though the world is getting away with murder. Be careful, be careful, y'all, that you don't envy the wicked because the wicked are only standing by the grace of God. And when God says that is enough and he cuts them off, even the remembrance of the wicked will be erased from all of history. But that is not so for the righteous. The righteous are established in Christ Jesus forevermore. Therefore, do not listen to their vain words. Do not listen to their ideology. Because if you do that, then you become partakers with them in that. Whatever a man soweth, that shall he also reap, the Bible says. For you were once darkness, but now you are the children of the light in the Lord. Walk, Christians, as children of light. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness, righteousness, and truth, finding out what is acceptable to the Lord. We need to underline that verse. We need to get it on social media. 
Ephesians uh, 5, verse 10, finding out what is acceptable to the Lord, not what is uh, on the uh, trending on Twitter, not what is popular on Facebook, not what people are uh, 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 upholding or adhering to that seems popular right now. But we're to find out what is acceptable unto the Lord and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. But then he does not stop there, body of Christ. He goes on and says, but rather reprove or expose them. For it is shameful even to speak of those things which are done by them in secret. But all things are all, but, uh, but all things that are exposed are made manifest by the light, for whatever makes manifest is light. Therefore, as he says, the Lord speaks, Awake, you who sleep, arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. I'm witnessing folks getting filled with fear with all that has been transpiring in our nation in the last few weeks. Many are realizing that so much is changing right in front of us, and none of it is good for our nation. Folks are wondering, where is justice and equity? And you may be asking, where is God, and why, he is, why is he allowing evil to destroy our country? What we're witnessing didn't just happen overnight, y'all. Whatever a person sows, that they shall also reap. It doesn't happen overnight, but it does happen over time. It's been taking decades for what, we are to, what we're seeing today manifest. It has taken decades for it to get to this place. We're just seeing the manifestation of the works of darkness. This is why I love the Scripture. This is why I love the Holy Spirit, because the Holy Spirit not only teaches us and guides us into all truth, the Holy Spirit is the very heart of God, and He teaches us the ways of God. And when you know the ways of God, then you can have the understanding of the things of God, and so the things that would otherwise cause you to have concern and to wring your hands and to worry... Those things do not affect you because you've got truth, you've got understanding, you've been given revelation of the Word of God, and you have been spoken to by the Spirit of God in your prayer time, and He's showing you that what is happening looks like it's chaotic, it looks like it's a, everything is out of control, but can I tell you throughout human history, there have been times just like today that has gone on in nations, and, and Christians were wringing their hands and thinking, what is going on? And all it was was God was working behind the scenes, bringing everything that was hidden. He said, everything that's been covered over, everything that, that's been kept in secret, I'm bringing it out. I'm, I'm letting it be made known. And God is bringing things out to the surface. And when you start seeing the ugly, the underbelly of sin start coming out and manifesting as evil and corrupt behavior in the very highest office of America, then know that God is expecting exposing with his light and with his truth the, the wickedness and the vile stuff that is trying to take this nation. Satan is trying to use it to take this nation down. And God says, no, I've got a righteous seed. I've got a righteous church. And I'm going to spare my, my people from destruction that is coming upon the earth. But I've got to send my prophets out to the nation and tell them, wake up, church. Wake up, church. Come out from among them and be ye separate. You're not children of darkness. You're not children of night. You're children of light and children of the day. Come out so you do not partake of the destruction that's going to come upon them and that without warning. God is bringing everything to light that has been hidden under the cloak of darkness. He's bringing it out. Here's a warning, y'all. Now's not the time to give ourselves over to despair and hopelessness. Did you hear what the Spirit just said? He said, tell my people, now is not the time 
for you Christians to go into despair and hopelessness because the things that you thought were going to happen in November, thought might happen in December, did not happen. And it's now January. He says it's not the time to go into hopelessness and to despair because the God that was on the God in November, on the throne in November, he's still the God on the throne here in January, and he still has a plan. He still has a hope and a future for us, and he has already sealed our victory in Christ Jesus and signed it and sealed it with the blood of Jesus Christ. Now is not the time, y'all, to give in to despair and hopelessness. I live in the same America that you live in. I live under the same uh, uh, government that you live in. I listen to the same things out here in the world that, that you do because we have to hear things that are going on. But nevertheless, we do not give ourselves into despair and hopelessness because it seems like we're not getting our way. We still call on God because God is the God of all gods. He's the Lord of all lords. And he still is in control and on the throne. And he still is going to give us the victory. Let's get our eyes on the Lord and let's not us let Let's not listen to the ten unbelieving spies. Listen to the word of the Lord. If we don't give ourselves over to Satan, hear what I'm saying, y'all. If we do not give ourselves over to Satan, I can assure you on the authority of God's word that God is not going to give us over to Satan either. Now is the time for believers to stand for truth and righteousness, and to be real Christians. As we get ready to leave you today, I want to encourage you, be sure and mark down the time and the station that you're watching this on, and be sure and tune in next week for the powerful conclusion of Stand Strong for Jesus. God is laying a foundation throughout this Word, and you don't really get the full impact of it until the end of it, and that will be airing this time next week. If you'd like to hear it in its entirety without interruption, please contact our church office. The information will be at the bottom of the screen, and there you can let the operator know the sermon that you would love to receive a CD of. is called Stand Strong for Jesus. We'll get it out to you as promptly as possible. I want to thank those who have stood with us throughout the time that we have been on the air. God has really blessed this ministry for the last 10 plus years to do what God has called us to do, and that's to touch the nations of the world with His Word. And He's given me a tongue and learn that I may know how to speak a word in season to those who are weary. And many of you have attested to that, that He has spoken through this ministry time and time again to give you words of encouragement, words of instruction, words of edification, and every bit of it is backed up out of the Word of God. And you're a part of that. Would you prayerfully consider, if you have been a viewer of this ministry, taking that next step in becoming a partner and helping us hold our arms up and do what God's called us to do, and that's to go out even further and to reach more for His glory and for His kingdom. You can go to our website there. You can learn all about how to be a partner, how to stand with us, and everything that you sow into the television ministry will go right back into it so that we can do what God's called us to do and make disciples of the nations. As always, I want to give you opportunity. If you have any prayer requests, perhaps we have been praying with you and you've got some praise reports, we'd love to hear from you. Let us know what God's doing in your life or what you need God to do. We'll be glad to agree with you and stand with you on God's word for things to be moved out of your life so that God can bring even greater things that he needs to do in and through you. Till this time next week, may God richly bless you is my prayer.